we going everybody? Now from yesterday's little video that we posted, talking about how wonderful the weather's been. Well today, straight after that actually, straight after that, and all last night, there you go, there's another pool we got there, or another dam. We came out here and had a look at the citrus trees, just to give you an idea on how deep it is. Now look, this is not a whinge, this is not me complaining about being waterlogged because I know there are a lot of people out there who are suffering, seriously suffering from these ridiculous rains that we're having folks um, and our hearts and thoughts go out to those who are really struggling, who have lost their homes and you know their livelihood but this is all in within about five hours, six hours. This is only one of many spots and our topic is gardening folks so I'm going to stick it to that, I'm not going to go into the crazy world that we live in at the moment. Let's talk about this. Now if you had a pot, plastic pot, terracotta pot, even or a glazed pot, those real fancy ones and you had a tree in it sitting in water like that, guarantee it's going to be waterlogged, completely waterlogged. This is breathing now because we've got the felt bag around it. Again, I can't stress how important it is to get the airflow in your plants. Not just about citrus, we're talking about all types of plants that need to be able to breathe in the root zone. So consider raising your pots if you're not going to go into a felt bag or you know, a grow pack bag as we got there. Get some bricks underneath it, make it look fancy, use some pot feet, whatever you need to use to get that airflow going through. And especially on those large pots, they've got only the one single hole most times and it's never big enough and adequate enough for good drainage. It can clog up quite easily, even with pebbles underneath there. Soil will eventually seep through, so get it up and that way you've got the drainage and it may just drip slowly out but it's better than no drip at all and it becoming anaerobic because that's when the bad stuff starts to happen. And again, I had a lot of emails come in already, people complaining about their trees going yellow, even your tomatoes, of which, let's go check them out. It's as wet as hell here. Actually, hell's not wet. Here we are, let's have a look. Now, some of you, look how wet, look at that, my moat. I've got my moat, I'm gonna put some fish in there. I'm gonna go fishing, you know. Last week, this time, well, this time or Tuesday last week, Wednesday, I was out here in shorts and topless, baking my donut's body here, making a bit of a tan on it, and now I'm wrapped up like a little baby again, freezing because of the bloody cold weather. Anyway, let's get in here. Tomatoes don't look like they're suffering at all. Toop, toop, toop. We spit on them for good luck. That's a Greek thing. This is my tomato peg, folks that I demonstrated to you, I think it was last week or something like that. But I haven't uh, staked them up yet and it's about time I did because have a look at the size of these leaves. Even with the cold weather, caterpillars, snails, we put some snail bait down here to fix them up. But have a look at these, look at the size of these beautiful leaves. Even with the crazy weather that we're having, this is really strong and healthy. I need to actually stake this up now, I can't leave it anymore. Now this is a tomato peg, so you know we've got three strings on it for those who haven't seen it yet. Alright, you stake it down to the base of the tomato so you don't have to actually tie it to the trunk of the tomato plant. And you don't have to worry about ring barking and choking the plant and pulling on it and all that sort of stuff. So it sits right next to the plant. For example, if I can get in here comfortably, just like that. Now once you've got it in the ground, at the top here, just loosen it, a single knot, so you can tension it. Keep it nice and taut, not too tight, you don't have to go really tight. That's all you need to do, and this is how we tie it. Simple through loop, and just pull it tight, and that's all you've got to do. And then, you wrap around your leader. Now we've got a couple of leaders coming on here. This is the beginning of our tomato growing techniques. Remember, we've got to pinch out all the extras that we don't want here. I only want three and I'm going to start from the bottom. I've got one on that side there, there's one growing over here, and there's another one on the other side there, and the little one there. Just pinch a little one off, I don't need them, see that? We've gone through this before, if you haven't seen it, look for my previous videos or other videos on tomato growing and just pinch them out so you learn how to do it. Now, wrapping it around, we're going to start with the middle one. So this middle string is going to be the main stem. That's what I'm going to use it for. And all we do is go around, grab the leaves carefully, and go around once, and then a second time like that. That stabilizes it, okay? That's nice and stable. Nothing more, nothing less. We've got the first cluster of flowers. You don't want the string rubbing on it. Now, as the little ones start to grow, 
out along here, they're gonna reach four to six inches. You start wrapping them around separately on this. So eventually you've got one, two, three, just snaking around all the way up to the top. And with a bit of luck and the weather behaving, behave. And if it does behave, you're gonna get nice big tomatoes, maybe up to two, two and a half kilos. Remember, you're gonna to need to tie them up and hold them up, otherwise they may tear off the branch. One, two, three, four, a little one. I've planted five, six, seven over here. Big malacus, big plant. Look at the flowers coming on beautifully. It is cold, it's only 11 degrees today, folks. I'm wrapped up like a mummy. I don't normally dress like this, but you know, old age gets to you a little bit. Yet, even with the bad weather, folks, the plant's still holding its color. And you know why it's holding its color? Because we've got plenty of nutrients in the soil. Doesn't have to be our planting mix. And I know I've, I've beaten it to death because it is good stuff. You can use your own organic uh, compost if you like. If you make it yourself, you can use a organic fertilizer, something that's rich with, you know, microbial activity that's gonna put some life back into the soil. That's what you need and also get on with the caterpillars, all right? As cold as it is, the caterpillars are out. These need to be tied up as well. I've got to get some more tomato pegs and start training these up to get along. Let's go and check out the rest of the garden. Not happy. If I remember the Lebanese, I can't remember, see I didn't label them, but I'll know once the fruit comes up. These are either Lebanese or burpless. So I've got two and two. So they fancy one variety, not the other. And what I'm talking about here is a bloody pest. Look, gone for a few days, haven't looked at them, eaten. Oh, bugger me. I'm hoping it bursts out again. They're right there in that node there. Maybe, maybe, because it's got a strong root system on it. But this is not a cucumber leaf, by the way. That's the memory plant. Let's hope they come good. I'll give them another three or four days. I don't expect to see any growth now with the 12 degree weather, folks. That happens. Now, the peg came out. Whether a rabbit got in here and ate them, I don't know, because they are getting into the garden again. Even though I've got it um, fenced off and netted off well, they ate these two, not the other two. We'll just monitor these for a couple of days, otherwise we're gonna replace them. And I know a lot of people are experiencing that, not because of pests, because of what's going on up there. Everything's going out of control here. Broad beans, rust, rust all over them. Won't affect the pods, hopefully not, but most times it doesn't. We've got some half decent pods coming on here. Not the biggest one so far. Still got to grow a bit more. I've seen some larger ones in the past. Here we are. So, you know, what do you do with your broad beans when they start getting rust on them and leaf spot? Not a lot, just let them go. There's no point to sit there trying to clean them and spray them. Really nothing, because you're getting close to the end of the season. Have a look at these little beauties, eh? Mmm. You can eat them fresh, not too many. You blow up. And once these finish, we pull them out. We'll talk about the nodules at the base. Look at this, look at this. These are my leeks. Can you believe this? Destroyed. It wasn't the broad beans, the weather. Crazy, crazy weather. See how they're struggling? These leeks here are struggling by comparison to these ones that are going to flower already. I've got to pull them out. That didn't take long. Oh! You can see, get some giant elephant leeks at the stores, but mate, who knows what they're feeding them? That's all you want. Don't let them go like that, otherwise they get too woody and you can't eat them. So I've got to pull all these out, chop them up, freeze them, make some pita. But these ones here, and I should have mentioned it, it's because they're competing against a broad bean. So we've got companion planting going on, probably the mulch as well, because there's probably a bit more alkaline here. They've been beaten to death because the weather and nutrient deficiency or, you know, competition between the broad beans. And you can see how big the broad beans are. They're probably sucking the life out of it. Now, look at the actual garlic plants. They're starting to get streaks in them. I'm going to come around here. Bit early for them to finish. And I better hurry up and finish because the clouds are rolling in again, folks. We're going to get bombarded. I might pull one out just as a trial to see how it's going. Yeah, still growing. Still got to grow. Still a lot of time to grow, but that's not a bad size for it so far. 
Still a bit of growth left to go in here. Normally you let these die down, two thirds of them start to yellow off and wilt away. That's when you pull them out, folks. But you know, I'm not complaining about that. This should be almost double the size. So we've still got another month of growing on them if the rust doesn't knock them out. You want to spray them, you're welcome to disease control pack. I'm not spraying them, but by comparison again, see here, we've got Ethiopian garlic in here going on, folks. These have been knocked over because of the broad beans. Have we got any heads on this? Oh, come on. Yeah, look, even though, look how much skinnier it is in the stalk. And you can see the size of their difference in the bulb head there too. Still not too bad. We've got plenty of broad beans on this side. Look at that. Nice. So, even though we've got some crazy weather going on, folks, if your garden's well prepared, you've got it well composted, you've got your organic matter in it, you're looking after it, it's not yellowing off too quickly because that would mean you haven't got enough, you know, nutrients in the soil. Start replenishing it. Our superfood, our compost, our... Go to your local garden centre and see what they've got there to support your garden. Keep it natural, keep it real, keep it organic. And I nearly forgot about this bed here. We've got beds everywhere and I've only gone to two or three of them so far. They're coming along. Okay, this tomato's got to be tied up. Look at that, it's fallen over. That, one of these. That's George's big, <laughs> look at the flowers on this. That's nuts. That's crazy. Okay, that's, a, that's, a, that's the end of the flower there. When you see something like that, folks, pinch it off. Get rid of it. That's going to do nothing for you. It's going to stop and slow down the production, the growth on it. So get rid of those little big, or those big sort of double flowers that look quite weird. We've got shoots coming out of the bottom. So that there is just another cluster of flowers. Now that should continue to grow for you, as will these ones, and develop up. Now I'm going to frame these up with our tomato stakes, sorry our tomato pegs, but I'm going to build a little frame over the top to show you how you can do it too if you haven't got a frame or structure where you can hang your strings down. It's real simple to do, we're not going to do it today. Stay tuned for that one coming up. In the meantime, check out our website, vasiliesgarden.com, everything you need every day, discounted prices. Real people, real gardens, real food. From me, Vasily, Maresi.